This week on the 414 Live, we'll be discussing how to create and build true high-performance marketing teams. Marketing teams which have a laser-focused shared sense of vision and purpose, which is ultimately why they're able to produce exceptional results. I'll be speaking with Gary Hurry, Vice President of Thomson Reuters, who will be sharing everything which he has developed to create and build high-performance marketing teams which, which operate at the very highest levels of efficiency and output. Hi, I'm James Rostance and welcome to the 414 Live, here on LinkedIn Live each and every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. The 414 is produced exclusively for you as a professional B2B marketer, whether you work in-house at an agency or company side. Whichever it is, the purpose of the show is to help you expand and enhance your professional knowledge within the B2B marketing sphere every week. And the way that we do that is by interviewing some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing. This week, we will be talking about high performance marketing teams, specifically how to build, create and lead them. And the guest I've got today is very much an expert in this field because he's an award-winning uh, marketing expert who creates and builds marketing teams which perform at the very highest levels. Joining me live from Canary Wharf in London, please welcome Gary Hurry. Good morning, James. Great to speak to you today. Welcome to Thomson Reuters. Thank you for joining us. So Gary, could you start by sharing your take on the importance of team building within marketing, but specifically to the level and focus to which you prescribe? Sure, and I won't start with a cliche or a quote because you'd mentioned that at the outset. Um, but I think we're in an era of marketing where we're constantly talking about mar marketing technology or MarTech and account-based marketing or digital, but so little mind space, I believe, is given to people by leaders. And when you think that people cost in a B2B marketing organisation are typically a third to half of the overall marketing budget, I think it's kind of scandalous that so little attention and energy and focus is given to developing people. And we're really hot on setting that right at Thomson Reuters and putting people absolutely at the centre of our marketing strategy. Could you next then run through what preparatory measures uh, need to be run through before you can set about implementing at this higher level of team building? For sure, and the first one's really easy, but really often overlooked, and that's just listening. And what we set about doing was building something that was really inclusive. So it wasn't Gary standing up on a stage and saying, here's our vision for the future, but there was something that included everybody in marketing. So we're really keen, and we took a lot of time and energy to listen to how people felt today, and critically, what their hopes and dreams and fears were for the future. So we really use that to, to, to start to articulate a new vision for marketing. And that was really our shared collective purpose of, of where we wanted to get to. So that was kind of number one for us. We then set about really identifying our gaps and opportunities for the future. And we did this in a really analytical way using industry benchmarking analysis with a company called Gartner. Um, and so we were able to build something that was built on, on data and analysis, but was also really about connecting people emotionally. So for me, great marketing is when you connect emotion and, and rational thinking, and that's what we've done in taking our team forward. Okay, so what kind of challenges or roadblocks even would someone likely encounter when setting about trying to implement this kind of change? I think the first one is probably within the marketing team and marketing's a tough gig I think particularly in B2B and, and I'm sure all of your viewers will recognize some of the challenges of being really successful today 
And so I think the first challenge is within the team, and that's really smashing through any limiting beliefs that might exist. So things that were done before that didn't work, we couldn't do this because dot, dot, dot. And that for me is the single probably biggest thing I brought as a leader to this team is to enable the marketing team to start afresh, to be brave, to be bold, to push away the past and go forward really confidently. Now I touched a little around stakeholders and that for me is also key to removing barriers is bringing people on the journey with us. And clearly we work with sales, with finance, with product development, with strategy teams, with other business leaders around our organisation. We needed to make sure that they are on board this, this journey with us and so we invested a lot of time in, in bringing them along with us. And the third point is to make it real. So having a really great vision and direction and a drive to improve our people capabilities is fantastic, but it means nothing unless we, we bring along results, business outcomes, and we can clearly demonstrate that what we're doing is having an impact on the bottom line. Okay, so when it comes to actually taking things forward and setting about building a killer marketing team, what's actually involved? So for us, as some of it I've already touched upon, but we, we started out by building a really compelling vision. And I don't mean something that necessarily goes on a wall that we all look at once every six months and then blindly go about our business, but something really emotionally connecting for our people to get behind. So that was kind of our first step, and that was done in a very inclusive way, as I mentioned. We then built this very detailed gap analysis of where we wanted to go, where we were perhaps needing to invest more energy or, or, or resource into, and from there, build a really clear set of priorities for us over a two year period. So our vision could start to come to reality by having some really clear deliverables in place. So you might refer to that as a roadmap, but I'm conscious of not mentioning cliches, as you said, <laughs> as, you, as you said at the outset. So that was really key for us to turn that from a, from a dream into some reality. <clears throat> One of the other things that we felt was really important in our journey was to have something really big that announced a new marketing to the business. And we had a, a difficult trading period within our organisation. We were getting really hit by a major competitor and utilising this new kind of confidence and way of working in marketing, we completely repositioned our brand and our, our go-to-market strategies. So much so that we, <clears throat> we increased marketing performance by over 25% in a quarter. We elegantly pushed our competitor back in their place. Yes, elegantly. And in doing so, completely repositioned what marketing can do in the organisation. So that was really key for us early on. As we've then progressed, we've invested really heavily in training. So every member of the marketing community that um, was within Thomson Reuters had access to a, a, an award leading, uh, sorry, an award winning online marketing training resource so that everybody could raise their professional capabilities to the same level. But in addition to really deep learning opportunities for every member in the team in their functional specialism. So we've created a vision, a roadmap, we've really invested in our people. And one of the other things that I think equally is really important is we made it fun. So we would get the team together once a quarter, sometimes once a month. We'd do crazy things. We had an underground house DJ at a team meeting. Nobody knew he was there, just arrived at you know, nine o'clock in a nondescript hotel. This guy's banging out some, some tunes. We've had Michael Jackson thriller dancing, just crazy things that make it a great place to be so that you've got a team of people that are connected into a longer term purpose, are really clear on what they need to do, have got the training and learning support they need to fulfil their potential, but equally in a really quirky, fun, dynamic environment that allows people to be their best. Absolutely. I, I think having surprised superstar DJs uh, at marketing seminars and training events is uh, definitely a, a good way to go. I like that. Well, it's possibly a one-off, 
maybe, maybe to return at some point. Um, and it, you know, it kind of doesn't really matter what it is, James. It's just something that I think disrupts. And you know, I want the team here to feel secure and safe in their roles and their future with, with Thomson Reuters, but equally, in the same way we might do with our customers, I think a little bit of disruption and quirkiness inspires people you know that sort of create memories that people talk about and they may go home and go, you never guess what that crazy guy had us doing today but that's all part of it for me and and i, I think you can't take one of these elements in isolation it's it's the complete package you know we have a really diverse team as well and it's something that's really that we're really passionate about is really within the dna of thomson reuters so we've got this really rich diverse team that are pulling together as one, doing great things, being developed, and having a great time along the way. And for me, that's a really willing, winning combination for us. Okay, so what then for you are the key elements for success in all of this? I think there are really two main ones for me, James, and they're both connected to the emotional side, and I've talked about emotional and rational today. The first one that I've already touched upon is make it inclusive. And for me, that is the single most compelling factor in driving tra transformation in people. You know, we're all humans. If we feel consulted, involved, respected, then we're so much more likely to get behind something than if some guy, as I said, stands at the front of a room and says, hey, this is our vision. Everyone get behind it. So number one is to be really inclusive and the second one for me and this applies to the marketing teams as well as those around us and that's bring people along the journey with you so consult share share again get us around to as many other team meetings never stop talking about this transformation that that we're building and, and how we're taking things forward communicate successes celebrate those successes and really invest the time and energy because it does take energy in bringing each and every stakeholder on that journey every step of the way so once you have all of that in place and you've got a smooth running highly efficient team what does that look like and what is the outcome in your experience Well, firstly, I'd say that it's, it's never done. <laughs> so we got to a good place, but equally, business has changed. The world is evolving, as we know. So it's, ne it's never, a, for me, this is never a finished thing. But we got to a great place where we were attracting and retaining amazing talent in marketing. So that's one area of how it looks for us. We were able to drive significant uplift in our commercial performance. So in doing so, show the business what marketing can really deliver um, and that is a kind of self-fulfilling um, upside for us. Um, we had an amazing year of award successes last year which we'd never had before so we won two really big marketing awards. So I can say that as part of our transformation program for people we've now got a team of really inspired buzzing marketing professionals that are part of an award-winning team that's smashing commercial goals and is really central to the business. And if I, if I were to take a step back, certainly three years, marketing was really a support function in the business. And so in that time, I think we've really dramatically transformed it into a central, strategically critical and commercially important part of the business. And finally, what would be your advice for someone in a similar role or position for them to start taking the initial steps in developing a team of this calibre? I think first advice would be maybe get some of the hygiene factors working because I experience a lot of marketing organisations that the, nobody has any goals or objectives or one-to-ones or coaching. That costs nothing and get that working perfectly now because there's no reason not to. Um, I think, as I said, marketing is a tough profession and I think we need to allow ourselves the space to, to grow and develop our people 
and have a goal, you know, have a really ambitious goal. Where do we want to take this in two years? What's going to make our people leap out of bed and want to go and give the best of themselves each and every day? And that would be my real advice. So get the hygiene factors right. Don't do this as an afterthought. You know, as I mentioned, we spend so much time optimising media performance, digital strategies, MarTech roadmaps. But really, and the big question I would say to your um, list, uh, sorry, viewers is, do you spend as much time thinking about your people as you do about some of those core marketing deliverables? And I think, you know, that's, again, it's free, it's simple. Do it today would be my advice. Brilliant stuff. Gary, thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thanks, James. Good to speak. And if you enjoyed watching and you'd like to learn more insights and wisdom from some of the greatest and most interesting minds in B2B marketing every single week, then please do subscribe to the 414 podcast on your favorite podcasting app. And, or as well, uh, search for the 414 on YouTube where we've got all previous episodes on there and also everything's also subtitles. I'm very big on subtitling everything. So there we go. Subscribe to the 414 podcast or the YouTube channel. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. We'll be here same time next week on LinkedIn Live every Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. My name's James Rostance. Thank you for watching. Thank you.